Hi, my name is Melody Adams, and we are studying Egypt and its culture. This is my clay piece. This is King Tut's mask that covers his mummy. I will tell you why I picked it. Special people like kings are mummified and have their own tomb. A man named Howard Carter spent six years looking and digging around the Egyptian desert searching for the tomb of King Tut. We may call him King Tut, but archaeologists call him King Tutankhamun. He had found many other tombs of the digging, but the other tombs he had found had been robbed by tomb robbers. But King Tut's tomb was untouched. When he almost gave up, he found it. He discovered it step by step until he uncovered it all. When he discovered it, he, f he also discovered King Tut's mummy and all his treasures. King Tut's mask is beaten with gold and jewels, which covers the head. I picked this piece because it is different from the other masks, plus King Tut was a very unique pharaoh. So you can see, it took a long time to find King Tut's tomb, but it doesn't mean it, he is any less important to the Egyptian history. Now here's Cameron with her clay piece. Hi, my name is Cameron. I'm going to tell you about my sculpture. I'm in a jar with the head of Queen Efertiti. Queen Efertiti was the wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten. She ruled ancient Egypt from 1352 BC to 1336 BC. There are many paintings and carvings that show her wearing a special crown. Here are some pictures of her wearing the crown. She is wearing the crown in my sculpture. The symbols I use mean Queen Efertiti in the Egyptian language. The sculpture relates to ancient Egypt because it has an Egyptian queen. I chose to do this sculpture because it was very interesting to read about Queen Nefertiti. Queen Nefertiti had great influence over her husband. Since she was a royal wife, she became a priestess as many other royal wives did. After she died, her eldest daughter Meretetan took a royal place. She lived from 1380 to 1340 BC. Her tomb was discovered in 1898 by British Egypt Egyptologist Dr. Juan Fletcher. Her tomb was one of the greatest discoveries since the discovery of King Tut. I really wanted to do my canoptic jar on her because she has an interesting life. As you can see, she is a one-of-a-kind queen. Now here is James. And hello, my name is James. I'm going to talk about Egypt. Inside a pyramid, there is a pharaoh who was buried with all kinds of amazing treasures. But these treasures all stolen long ago. A mummy is a body that is embellished or preserved so it doesn't decay even over thousands of years. The Egyptians believed that doing this would mean that the person could carry on living in the next world. A neutron was put on it to cover the body to dry it out after several days the insides were are stuffed with lamb and sawdust neutron and sweet smelling herbs and spices. The body is wrapped tightly with bandages with lucky charms called amulets. Between the layers they use huge amounts of bandages. A priest comes to say prayers. He wears a mask on his head to look like the jackal god Anubis. I was looking on a piece of of a Egypt, Egyptian work on the internet. Over time, Egypt has had many gods. Egypt has had many four gods and people, so when I made the vase, I thought of many gods, so that's how I come up with my sculpture. It's Kellen Gunn, and I'm going to tell you about Ramesses II. Ramesses II was the third pharaoh in, in the 19th dynasty. During Ramesses II region, the Egyptian army was estimated about a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand men. The reason I did, in his wait, in his second year, Ramesses II decisively defeated Shadanda. His wife Nefari, Nefertiti, is tomb is the most decorative and spectacular in the land of queens. Her tomb is QV sixty six. The reason I did, did mass is because I love mass. They grab people's attention. The other reason I did mass is because I like to do extra credit. And Ramesses II was, was a great military leader.